every day. My DMs. Tom, did you hear about the Will Fuller news? Tom, did you hear about the Will Fuller news? Tom, did you hear about the Will Fuller news? I heard. And now here's the word. Nation, welcome to another episode of Podcast, the podcast where you don't have to be a Packers fan, but it sure does help. I'm your host, Tom. Trade deadline is upon us, and everyone has lost their minds. Grassi, and today we are going to be breaking down not just the Will Fuller news, but on top of that, taking a look at some other uh, trade rumors surrounding the Green Bay Packers and if it's actually feasible for them to make those trades. Before we get to that, I want to do a big shout and thank you to some brand new patrons and YouTube members. First, over on the Patreon.com slash Tom Grassi side of things, we got Johnny Renegade and we have Brandon Paniagua. So a big shout out and thank you to you both. And over on the YouTube side of things, we have Benny Lublinski and Angel the Furry Killer. A big shout out and thank you to you both. Now, the NFL trade deadline is this coming Tuesday, November 3rd, and so everybody's in a tizzy wondering if the Green Bay Packers are going to make some moves. Obviously, you see the Seahawks making some moves, getting some defensive pieces to make their team a little bit better. You see the Buccaneers making moves or, you know, picking up Antonio Brown. If you want to call that a move, I don't I don't know. That, that could be going backwards. But the point is, is that arguments have been made that the Green Bay Packers, they got to make the moves. They got to make the moves right now. And so let's talk about some potential people uh, that the Packers have been associated with that they've taken a look at and if it makes sense for them to sign to the team. So let's just get the big elephant out of the way. And let's talk about Texans wide receiver Will Fuller. So it was reported a couple days ago that the Green Bay Packers expressed some interest in Mr. Will Fuller. You know, we just played them, and so Will Fuller was like, please, for the love of God, get me out of here. Please save me. And it is no doubt that the Texans obviously are a struggling football team right now, heading for a pretty uh, big rebuild. They'll be getting a new uh, GM. They'll be getting a new head coach. Uh, But obviously, some main pieces will stay there. They'll have their left tackle. Watson is going to wind up staying there as well. And I would imagine a guy like J.J. Watt, which we will be talking about. Now, Will Fuller, he's a former first-round draft pick from 2016. He's only 26 years old. He is in the last year of his five-year extension. He's in his last year of his rookie deal, so they opted for his fifth-year extension, and so he is playing that out. Now, here are my concerns with Will Fuller, and then we'll get to the benefits. Since 2016, he has not played a full season. He has been hampered by injuries, so this is actually, so far this year, He actually hasn't missed any games due to injury, but that's been a big uh, concern for me. Will Fuller, I know if anyone's ever drafted him in fantasy, you've usually been disappointed because the guy can't stay healthy. Since 2016, he has played in 49 games, has had 305 targets, 187 receptions, a little over 2,700 yards, and 21 touchdowns. Now, one of the other reasons why people are looking at him is because he is a speedy wide receiver. He ran a 4-3-7 at the Combine, and so people are looking at and go, wow, this would be a great replacement for MVS. And I don't necessarily disagree with you. Now, the Texans have also come out and saying that they're not going to trade players just for the sake of trading players. They're going to want to get a really good offer. I would imagine in order to pry him away from the Texans, it would be a second-round pick or a combination of a third with another pick, maybe like a fifth or a sixth-round pick. Now, the Texans at this point really have nothing to lose because whether they do well or whether they do poorly, they don't have any first or second round picks in the 2021 draft. So honestly, they could just hang on to their players. Will Fuller, if he has a really good season, might wind up playing himself right out of Houston because the Texans wouldn't be able to afford him. In addition, as I mentioned earlier, all those injury problems, they might not want to re-sign him anyway. So far this year, he's had 31 receptions for over 400 yards and five touchdowns. So he's been having a relatively good season. And for the Packers... This would most likely be just a three-month rental. And here's why. If we brought over Will Fuller, and he did amazing, and we're like, oh, man, this is exactly what our team was needing. If we decided to keep him and re-sign him to another deal, which we would need to at the end because he's done with his rookie uh, contract, the problem is going to be is we already have so many people that we are going to have to re-sign. You have a David Bakhtiari. You have an Aaron Jones. You have a Jamal Williams. You have a Corey Lindsley. You have a Kevin King. And so looking ahead, we already don't have a ton of cap space. 
And on top of that, while we would be able to potentially afford him this year, looking into the future, this could be problematic. Now, if you're going in with the mindset of like, listen, we're kind of like, let's go all in and just try to win it this year because maybe we have a a, a smaller window with Aaron Rodgers plus maybe even with Aaron Jones and Bakhtiari, et cetera, because Bakhtiari is reportedly wanting $22 million to actually make him the highest paid left tackle in the league over Tunsil. And here's what I'm going to say about bringing in Will Fuller. I would not hate the move. I think that he would be an immediate upgrade over a guy like MVS. EQ, we haven't seen enough of him. Alan Lazard is back in practice. I don't know if he's going to be able to play this week. I would imagine not. They're going to wait and see with him. But he'll be back within the next couple of weeks. And of course, Devontae Adams is Devontae Adams and is playing amazingly. And in all of those wins that the Green Bay Packers have stacked up this year, wide receiver has not been a problem. Now, you can look at all the wide receiver stats, and MVS is really our second wide receiver right now, and he hasn't been that impressive. So you can look at that and say, like, that's kind of a glaring error or flaw with our team. But at the same time, Aaron Rodgers has been spreading the ball around pretty damn efficiently. You have guys like Tunyon, ugh, it should still be Tunyon, who are making impacts, right? You have guys like Millie Taylor who are getting their first TDs. Jay Sternberger got his first TD last week. And I feel like there are plenty of targets for the ball to go around to it, and they might just not necessarily be in the form or the role of a wide receiver. Aaron Jones, Jamal Williams, they are all very good pass catchers. So my only concerns with Will Fuller are, one, are we going to be able to afford him after this year, after we brought him in? Two, how much would it cost to actually bring him in in terms of draft picks? Because we do have a couple of comp picks because of guys like Kyler Fackrell and Blake Martinez. But again, like those are probably gonna be around like fourth round-ish picks. So would we be willing to give up a couple of fourths for him? Maybe that wouldn't be a terrible deal. The other concern that I'm going to wind up having, of course, is his health history. The guy has been not healthy ever since he'd gotten into the league. And that is a major, major cause for concern for me. So again, this is one of those signings which I wouldn't hate. I think it would be an immediate upgrade. I just think that there are some potential downsides, and it's basically going to come down to how much are we willing to give up to have a guy on the team for three months. Then another name that has been associated with the Green Bay Packers for about three weeks now is another Texan, J.J. Watt. Now, this one's going to be a bit quicker. One, I don't think the Texans are going to trade J.J. Watt. He literally is like the face of their franchise. Now, you could say, Tom, they did with DeAndre Hopkins. Yes, but Bob's not there anymore, so you don't have to worry about Bill O'Brien hurting you anymore. Second, he is due $15.5 million this year and $17.5 million in 2021. That is a lot of money that the Green Bay Packers do not have to pay. In addition, the Texans probably wouldn't move on from unless they were blown away with a deal, which would probably be a first rounder, which the Green Bay Packers are not going to give up for him. And finally, he is 31 years old. He's had 30 total tackles this year and five tackles for a loss and three sacks. And listen, J.J. Watt is still a very good football player. I would absolutely love for him to be on the Green Bay Packers. It would be such a nice feel-good story, a Wisconsin boy coming home, but realistically, it's not happening. There's no way that the Green Bay Packers are going to trade a first-rounder for him, and on top of that, eat this huge contract for this season and next season. It's just not going to happen. So unfortunately, you're not going to see J.J. Watt most likely in a Packers uniform. Then another guy who has been associated with the Packers is one that I think is actually pretty realistic, and we're still sticking with the Houston Texans because it's just a fire sale over there, and that is wide receiver Kenny Stills. Kenny Stills is 28 years old. He came to Houston last year after being traded from the Dolphins. So far this year... Uh, he's played in seven games. He hasn't started a single one and has only been targeted 18 times and he has 10 receptions for 138 yards and one touchdown. They are just not utilizing him over in Houston. Now, that is because Randall Cobb has been healthy. Will Fuller has been healthy. That being said, this is not a guy that would light the world on fire. This is not a guy that you're bringing in and you're like, wow, oh man, the team is so good now. However, I think that he could be a very reliable number two or number three for Aaron Rodgers. In addition, he would also be pretty darn cheap. I don't think we would have to give up a whole lot for Kenny Stills. And because the Texans aren't really utilizing him, I think they would also let him go for pretty cheap. So if there's any move that we actually realistically make for the Texans, I think it's going to be a guy like Kenny Stills. And it kind of makes a lot of sense. It provides some consistency, some veteran talent at wide receiver. I know not everyone is going to be happy about it because it's not too flashy, but... Logistically, this does make sense. In addition, if it doesn't work out, his contract expires after this season, so we can just let him walk away. So it'd be a cheap deal, and on top of that, there's no strings attached. Now, 
Now, here's another name that came across my desk, uh, and that's only because Colin Cowherd spoke it into existence, and somehow that means that that's a rumor. It's not. That's just Colin Cowherd ranting nonsense. But that's all Sean Jeffrey. All Sean Jeffrey has been made available by the Eagles, and I'm not surprised about this in any way, shape, or form. A former Bear, right? And we were like, oh, man, he's going to be really good. And when he's healthy, he is a very good wide receiver. However, the big thing is when he's healthy, and that's not very often. He is a huge health risk. He has not yet played a single game this year. He had a foot injury, then the foot injury got healed, and now he has wound up with a calf injury. So right off the bat, we don't even know when he's going to return. In addition, he's set to make $12.75 million next season, which is a lot of money. Uh, and I don't think the Packers are going to be willing to pay that for an injury-prone receiver who may or may not return this season. The one thing is I think the Eagles would be willing to trade him for pretty cheap just to get his contract off their books, but I don't think the Packers should take on his contract because I think it's way too risky. And while, yes, you could get a very good, healthy Alshon Jeffrey, that just doesn't happen too often. Then addressing some other players. First, you had Zach Ertz, in which the both the Packers and the Ravens apparently expressed interest in Zach Ertz before he went on IR, which because he is on IR, the Eagles actually can't deal him right now. And so that point is kind of moot. That's gone. And I was actually a little curious about this one. This one surprised me a little bit. Obviously, DeGuerra went out and Jay Sternberger hasn't been, you know, stepping up as much as we thought he was this season, even though it's still early. And then you have big Bob Tunyon, who has been doing pretty well. I was a little shocked that we were going to be willing to go out and get Zach Ertz, who's in for a major, major payday very, very soon. And listen, don't don't get it twisted here. Zach Ertz is a very good football player, one of the best tight ends in the league when he is healthy. And he has been a constant target for a guy like Carson Wentz. However, I didn't think the Packers would have any interest because, one, I thought we were pretty good at tight end considering we have just spent two third-round picks and back-to-back drafts for tight ends. And on top of that, he would cost a ton of money who would probably want to get re-signed to a new contract at the end of this season. So, a little weird for this one, but, I mean... I guess Goody just called to check in and he made an offer. Then taking a look at some other players that look to be unavailable over on the Cowboys, the Cowboys fat out came out and said that they are not going to be trading Michael Gallup. So unfortunately, you know, that hope dies as well. In addition, we are taught in addition, a rumor got brought up about Amari Cooper. He's getting paid $20 million a year. People it's not happening. He just signed a five year, hundred million dollar contract. Yeah. There's no way in hell. We're not even going to talk about it. However, the last two players that we're going to talk about, stem from the New York Jets. The first one is Quinn and Williams. Williams, I, I would actually love him on the team. Hasn't really been a great pass rusher, but has been dominant in the run game. Adam Gase has come out and said that he's not going anywhere, so that's disappointing. The other guy who I don't think the Jets are going to wind up dealing unless they're really, really in a sell-now mode and are going to go with a complete rebuild next year is wide receiver Jamison Crowder. I, of course, would love to bring Jamison Crowder in. He's currently their best wide receiver and is also injured, but I don't see them dealing him unless it's literally like that's the final nail in the coffin of Adam Gase and this 2020 season for the New York Jets. Crowder has been playing since 2015. He's only 27 years old. 2020 thus far, he's only played in four games, but in those four games, he's gone 29 for 383 yards and two touchdowns. Now, of course, the only problem here is what is he going to cost? And I'm not talking about his contract. I'm talking about what it's going to cost for the Packers to pry Crowder out of the cold, dead hands of Adam Gase and the New York Jets. I would imagine it's going to cost a good amount, maybe like a third round pick, could be even a second if you're getting really, really greedy. I don't know if the Packers are going to wind up taking a swing on that, but Crowder would be pretty damn cool in the Packers offense. I just don't know if the Packers are going to be willing to pay for him. And on top of that, I don't even know if Adam Gase is going to be willing to give him up. But those are some of the big names that have been associated with the Green Bay Packers. Obviously, if the Packers wind up signing anybody, we'll wind up, of course, making a video about this. If you had to ask me, I really wouldn't be terribly surprised if the Packers do not make a trade. I know that's kind of what we're used to. And I I wouldn't put it past Goody, you know, to make one, though, because he has been calling around. But at the same time, you know, the cap space that's coming up next year is going to be really, really tough on the Packers. And the fact that we're going to have to re-sign some of these impending free agents, they're going to cost a lot of money. Aaron Jones is going to cost a lot of money. David 
David Bakhtiari is going to cost a lot of money. Kevin King, if he continues to dominate this season and can stay healthy, he's going to cost a lot of money. And of course, Corey Lindsley, who I think is one of the best centers in the NFL, he's going to cost a pretty penny too. Now, realistically, we're probably not going to be able to keep all of these folks. But the point is, is that not everyone's going to be able to stay. And that gets even more complicated because of COVID and because of the restraints that are going to be on next year's cap. And more importantly, it's going to get even more complicated if you're bringing in a guy who is going to cost a lot next year. So I'm kind of looking at it for like, if the Packers wind up trading for a big name, it's going to kind of probably just be for this season. If they were to take a shot on a Will Fuller, I imagine it's going to be a three-month rental, and that's about it. And I'm not saying that's necessarily wrong, but it is kind of like that we have to win right now mentality. Because for this year, this is probably going to be the last season you're going to see a bunch of those impending free agents that I talked about on the Green Bay Packers. So, you know, you're going to be dealing with a probably less talented football team next year because we're going to have some holes, whether it's at left tackle, whether it's at corner, or whether it's going to be at center and or running back. So that being said, I would understand if they make a move because like the window for this year and the players that are playing for them is closing. It's all about how aggressive Goody wants to be. But let me know what you think down in the comments below. You can always find me at TomGrossyComedy.com or TomGrossyComedy on all social media you see down below. Check out podcasts on SoundCloud, iTunes, Google Play Music, Spotify, and of course YouTube. And a big shout and thank you to all the patrons over at Patreon.com slash TomGrossyComedy and the YouTube members. But thank you so much for watching. I'm Tom Grassy. And as always, go Pack Go. Oh,